we will move to the uh, next part of the presentation. Now we will be talking about <clears throat> proscopy. We have two talks. One it's gonna be um, about COVID and bronchoscopy. And then there will be a case about bronchoscopy. So uh, it's my pleasure to uh, uh, introduce Professor Mohammed Madi. He's a professor of chest medicine in Qasr al Aini University of Cairo, who will uh, talk to us about bronchoscopy in the era of COVID 19. So, Professor Nadi, please, you can start. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Bassam, for introducing me. Thanks, Mundi Farmo, for this nice uh, arrangement and gathering. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mohammed Nadi. I'm a professor of chest disease at Cairo University, and I am a member of COVID-19 Committee for the Egyptian Ministry of uh, Health. This is the logo of uh, my faculty of medicine, Cairo University, and this is the French hospital. It is now an isolation hospital, and I'm the medical director of the chest unit in the seventh floor. Uh, I'm going to speak about the role of the bronchoscopy in the era of COVID-19. But before I start, I have to mention that Bronchoscopy can treat asthma also uh, uh, using the technique uh, thermoplasty, bronchoscopy, thermoplasty, uh, based on if you can't dilate it anymore, destroy it all. So if you wanted to use the bronchoscopy in the era of COVID-19, you have to be cautious about that it is an aerosol generating procedure that places all of the healthcare provider at increased risk of infection. Because of this high risk of infection during the bronchoscopy, significantly raised, and for this reason, its role in diagnosis and the management is highly debated. So you have to remember always that aerosol generating a procedure, bronchoscopy is an aerosol generating procedure. So <clears throat> what is the exact role of bronchoscopy in the diagnosis and the management in patients with SARS-CoV-2 infection? Role of the bronchoscopy in the diagnosis is very limited because we rely more on the uh, nasal, uh, nasopharyngeal swab or oral swab as uh, the uh, bronchoscopic procedure uh, may expose the uh, medical staff at uh, higher risk of infection. So <clears throat> in spite of being highly positive in yielding the result, it, it is about 93% positivity in comparison to the nasal swab, which is about 63, and the pharyngeal swab, which is about 32. But in spite of that, we prefer to perform nasal swab or pharyngeal swab rather than performing uh, bronchoscopic a bronchoalveolar lavage to confirm the diagnosis of COVID-19. So the question is, has bronchoscopy a role in the diagnosis of COVID-19? And the answer will be from the American Association for Bronchoscopy and Interventional Pulmonology that bronchoscopy has a limited diagnostic role in COVID-19 due to substantial risk for contamination. Considering the non-invasive and the less contaminating options like nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal swab. So even in intubated patient or mechanically ventilated patient, you can collect the respiratory specimen through the tracheal aspirate and the non-bronchoscopic alveolar lavage better than bronchoscopic lavage. Bronchoscopy with PAL only indicated if clinical symptoms and signs consistent with COVID-19 pneumonia, but with two to three negative nasopharyngeal swab. Here is the indication. If you obtain two negative swabs or three negative swabs, you are justified to perform bronchoscopic lavage and to perform PCR through this bronchoalveolar lavage. And if the patient is intubated, you have to perform a first endotracheal aspirate should be preferred over bronchoalveolar lavage whenever possible. One of the leading roles of bronchoscopy is to identify potential alternative infections or co-infection, especially if our patients is markedly immunosuppressed or receiving drugs which lower his immunity. 
in recent, interestingly, recent studies reported alternative infectious diseases. About 65% of patients has super infection or co-infection with COVID either by bacteria or by fungi. So the bronchoscopy may be indicated in carefully selected patients with COVID-19 to rule out super infection and solve complication related to mechanical ventilation rather than in diagnosis. The presence of hematic, hematic secretions in the distal bronchi may be considered as a poor diagnostic feature in COVID-19. This is the hematic secretions or the presence of mucus secretion, which is a common finding in patients with COVID-19 during the bronchoscopy. So you may find also another finding <clears throat> such as mucosal elevation or epithelial plaques, which might be confused with bronchogenic carcinoma. So if you sample these areas, it will identify that it is consistent with COVID-associated pulmonary aspergillosis, fungal infection, associated fungal infection. So the role of the bronchoscopy during COVID-19 is to, uh, in patients uh, who are susceptible to develop VAP, is to exclude secondary bacterial infection, which is very common, up to 80%. Such higher instances due to marked immune suppression, prolonged mechanical ventilation, and in those patients, bronchoscopy might help to formulate the correct the diagnosis. Fungal co-infection has increased the instance up to 34 percent, up to 40, uh, up to 34 percent of our patients with COVID-19 during the bronchoscopy in the intensive care may have fungal infection, especially in hospitalized patients in the intensive care. Similarly to COVID-19, they have the same exact clinical manifestation regarding the fever, dyspnea, and the respiratory failure, and also pulmonary infiltrates. So the uh, diagnosis of COVID-associated pulmonary aspergillosis based mainly on microbiological criteria and BAL analysis. So the main indications, therapeutic indications of bronchoscopy in COVID-19 patient is to solve the problem of atelexis or mucus plugging or to explore the cause of homopsis. Or if you have a radiologic progression regarding the HRCT or persistence of radiologic infiltration in spite of intensifying the medical treatment, or if your patient difficult mechanical ventilation and prolonged weaning or impossible weaning from mechanical ventilation. And this is therapeutic indication. What is the main value? You may perform a bronchial aspiration. You may combine bronchial aspiration and the bronchoalveolar lavage. You may perform a bronchial brushing or wash washing, or you may perform bad. Also bronchoscopy can detect what's called nemo-mediastinum, which is a very common association in COVID-19 patient, pneumomediastinum can be detected by the presence of bronchial or tracheal injury, which can be visualized using the bronchoscope. And here is the chest X-ray, and here is the HRCT. So if you are going to perform a bronchoscopy for COVID-19 patient, what is the most important? The most important is your safety. Safety is the first issue. You have to be careful not to be infected during the procedure or before or after the procedure. So we have many papers, one of them in, the, uh, in Italy. They perform a bronchoscopy in the COVID-19 era and interventional pulmonology unit experience. They found that from the data of the first case of COVID-19 in our hospital, they found in both negative and the positive patients, no outbreaks of care. So it is safe, no outbreaks of care in patients known to have 
COVID-19 after a procedure, our experience is possible to continue endoscopic activity safety underscore that you are capable to perform endoscopy in the COVID-19 era. And this is a paper from Italy. A new way to protect yourself and to limit a result dispersion in that paper that the flexible instrument can be introduced through a disposable mouse piece. So this disposable mouse piece passing through the mask with a bag valve, with a bag valve in combination with my knees type adapter and this antibacterial antiviral filter link the adapter to the bag so as to prevent the infection to the bronchoscopist or the uh, helping staff. So before the procedure and the, during the procedure and after the procedure, certain recommendations should be followed. All the necessary equipment and the material before the procedure should be prepared outside the room. Saline, syringes, mucoactive drugs, microbiological recipients, and the bronchoscopy system scope and the screen should be prepared outside the room of the patient. Also, a negative pressure space should be created to avoid viral load to the medical staff with level three or PP of PPE, including N95 or filtering piece, mask, goggles, double gloves, and the plastic protective gown, including head and the neck cover or face shield. All of this should be taken before the bronchoscopy. During the bronchoscopy, it is very important to shorten the duration of the procedure, never more than 10 minutes. If the patient was on invasive mechanical ventilation, increase the FiO2 fraction as part of oxygen concentration up to 100% for 20 minutes so as to reach a saturation about 95 to 98. Also, an in intubation patient use intravenous sedation and with pressure controlled mode and to ensure that the patient is not fighting the ventilator and dealing with the bronchoscopy without any harm. So no time to teach, no time for medical staff to attend, to a student to attend, just to finish your job in less than 10 minutes. An intubated patient, the three-way valve, this is very important, three-way valve, it is called swivel adapter for bronchoscopy entry, so as to connect the patient to the bronchoscope and also connect it to the ventilator, so the patient will be uh, receive the tidal volume while you are performing the procedure to avoid discontinuation of the ventilator circuit and also help it to maintain positive end expiratory pressure if it is applied. For intubated patient, again, sedation and the paralytic agent should be given unless contraindicated. Also, the patient the nose and the mouse, if the patient is in non-invasively ventilated without endotracheal tube using a full face mask, it should be his mouse and the nose should be totally covered with medical mask or transnasal and transoral access. Cough should be minimized pharmacological if it is possible regarding the patient uh, cough. After the procedures, SARS-CoV-2 can remain aerosolized. So the virus may still, after the procedure, up to three hours and was viable on plastic surfaces, stainless steel surfaces for about 72 hours. So following the procedure, all the stuff involved, so gen, so should then prof BPE and perform meticulous hand hygiene. All horizontal and work surfaces, video monitors should be disinfected. Any bronchoscopy on suspected or confirmed COVID-19 patient should be followed by appropriate air turnover time. Single-use bronchoscopy, single-use bronchoscopy can be considered as a first line if available. This is the bronchoscopy which may be used as a single uh, use, but in uh, some poor countries, it, it will be an expensive procedure. So either to use the reusable bronchoscopy with major disinfection or re, uh, disposable bronchoscopy uh, like that in this picture. So the most important item is to protect yourself while performing the bronchoscopy. 
by covering the face of the patient or surgical mask or swivel adapter or intubation tent or desk looks like that during the intubation or during the bronchoscopy procedure. Last but not least, the chest journal uh, put six recommendations for the bronchoscopist to perform ideal bronchoscopy in the era of COVID-19. The first, when a patient with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 intending to perform a bronchoscopy, all health care workers in the procedure and the recovery room should use N95 respirator or what's called powered air purifying respirator. Powered air purifying respirator. This is the picture of powered air purifying respirator, and this is a picture of N95. For all health care workers, this is recommendation number one, and this is the picture of the bronchoscopist, standard precaution for bronchoscopy, showing a bronchoscopist with gown, gloves, mask, and eye gear, and sometimes face shield if needed. The second recommendation is that in patients suspected of having COVID-19 infection, nasopharyngeal specimen should be obtained first so as to confirm your patient has COVID-19 or not. In the setting of severe progressive disease requiring intubation, no time to perform nasopharyngeal swab. If additional specimen is needed to establish the diagnosis, or other diagnosis will it change the clinical spectrum of the disease. So lower respiratory specimen from the endotracheal aspirate or bronchoscopy with bronchoalveolar lavage can be performed. So there is uh, priorities. First, you have to arrange for nasopharyngeal swab. If it is not possible, endotracheal aspirate or lastly bronchoalveolar lavage using the bronchoscope. And if you perform a bronchoscopy with bronchoalveolar lavage, it is better to be protected the specimen brush so as to avoid contamination by commensals or uh, infection from other loops. When asymptomatic patient present with uh, COVID-19 without uh, any symptoms and they are candidate for bronchoscopy in the era of COVID-19, we suggest that all healthcare workers in the procedure, wear N95 respirator or power the air purifying respirator as opposed to surgical mask, because surgical mask regarding the protection, it is about 65% protection. If it is compared to N95, which give protection about 95%. Before performing the bronchoscopy in asymptomatic patient, in all in an area where COVID-19 infection is present, we suggest testing for COVID-19 infection. So if you are going to perform bronchoscopy electively in asymptomatic patient, please perform nasal swab or oral swab first to make sure that the patient is not uh, infectious. When bronchoscopy is indicated to diagnose or stage a known or suspected case of lung cancer in the uh, era of COVID-19, bronchoscopy should be performed in a timely and safe manner. No urgency to perform the bronchoscopy, no emergency to perform the bronchoscopy. It should be timely scheduled bronchoscopy to detect if the patient has a, a bronchogenic carcinoma or to stage the patient with bronchogenic carcinoma or to uh, interfere with this patient by stenting of the airway. The last recommendation in patients with COVID-19 infection, we suggest that timing of the procedure can be customized based on the indication of the procedure, severity of COVID-19 and the symptom for resolution. So timing is very important. My last slide is about different indications of the bronchoscopy in the era of COVID-19. Is your bronchoscopy is emergency or urgent bronchoscopy or non-emergent, non-urgent bronchoscopy? So 
What is the emergency to perform bronchoscopy immediately now if you have a, a massive hemopsis? And here we should mention that rigid bronchoscope is superior than fiber optic bronchoscopy. Fiber optic bronchoscopy is an eye on the airway, while rigid bronchoscopy is a hand inside the airway. Fiber optic bronchoscopy, if the patient has massive hemopsis, will uh, obscure the vision, and, you, and some, sometimes you cannot identify the source of the bleeding. Also, emergency bronchoscopy, if you have a migrated stent, or if you have a central airway obstruction with severe symptoms, or if you have tracheal stenosis or bronchial stenosis. Regarding the urgent bronchoscopy, if you have a lung cancer, mass suspected, mediastinal or higher lymph node needs to be sampled, whole lung lavage as a therapeutic tool, uh, as in patients with, uh, 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 with uh, diseases which necessitate a whole lung lavage immediately, or if uh, foreign uh, uh, body aspiration, or if uh, the patient uh, has mild to moderate hemopsis, or if the patient has infection in immunosuppressed and you need to make a sample from the protected specimen brush during the bronchoalveolar lavage. So this is the emergency and this is the urgency bronchoscopy. Non-emergent is the rest of the other indication such as mild tracheal or bronchial stenosis, clearance of mucus, high suspicion of sarcoidosis, chronic interstitial lung disease, detection of chronic infection, mycobacterial tuberculosis, bronchoscopic lung volume reduction, or bronchial thermoplasty, as I mentioned in the first, uh, first uh, in my talk, or if the patient has chronic cough and they need to be investigated, or if the patient has tracheomalacia and they need to be evaluated. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mohamed Nadi. Uh, I think uh, the most important part that, as you said, uh, is the safety. If you can, yes. diagnose it, do not do anything else. And uh, yes. like they say, always say, do no harm. Yes. Okay, so let's go over the uh, chat and of the questions, uh, if somebody. So um, let me just ask you this. At the beginning of the uh, SARS, sorry, of the COVID, people were talking about doing something like a sequential lavage so that it will uh, help clearing the lung and uh, prevent uh, severe infection. Do you believe in that? Do you, do you still think that we can do some therapeutic modalities for people who are going into severe COVID? Uh, thanks, Dr. Bassam, for this question. But I think viral infection is mainly interstitial. So it is not related to alveolar edema. It is It starts interstitial, then it affects other organs through cytokine storm or inflammatory exudate. So if you can uh, control the inflammation or the inflammatory cascade, you will control your patient. Uh, bronchoscopy has no therapeutic indication in COVID-19. Mainly, it is a diagnostic tool. If uh, you perform nasopharyngeal swab and it was negative, you are justified to uh, perform bronchoscopy to exclude or to confirm or to exclude super added bacterial or fungal infection. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, because these reports were from South Africa initially, and I totally agree, it would rather be dangerous to do yes. such a thing. And I think I think yes. now we have some good medication for that. So uh, let me see if we have um, more questions for you. Uh, go over the chat. That seems to be it. So, Dr. Nadi, thank you very much. Thank you. And next time, I think I'll be very careful.